and grinding sucks, so let's make every Pokemon level 100. I'll go more in depth on this challenge in my earlier video on Pokemon Shield, so please check that out. But to summarize the rules of a hardcore Nuzlocke, you can only catch the first encounter per route. If a Pokemon faints, it's no longer usable. Set mode must be on. No items can be used in battle, but held items are fine. There are level caps based on the next gym leader's ace, and you can only catch one Pokemon of an evolutionary line. And some personal rules I add, you can only use the same number of Pokemon as the gym leader. If presented with an option, choose the one that will make the game harder, for example pick the worst starter for that region. And this game added a weird feature that ties affection benefits directly to friendship. I'll be giving myself a bunch of herbal medicine and some very other legit methods to try and keep my friendship low. But if an affection bonus does get triggered, I'll just move past it. I won't be restarting the battle or anything like that. I don't really understand the reasoning behind this. Every other game has an optional mechanic that activates this, and even this game has Puffins and Amity Square. Like there were ways to section this off. Anyway, now the rules for the specific challenge. I'll only be allowed to use a Pokemon's level 100 moveset, aside from TMs. These are basically the last four moves a Pokemon learns. And I wouldn't be allowed to use the move learner other than to reteach Pokemon the level 100 moves. And that's that, so let's get started. We take advantage of a poor old man's dimension, steal a Pokemon from his briefcase before his caretaker comes back. I choose Turtwig as despite being good against the first gym, I reckon our rival levels having the only good fire type of this region would make this challenge harder. Also, this means that we lose our access to the only good fire type. Oh. Rowan has a moment of clarity, but gets distracted so we get to keep our spoils. The next day we get called by his caretaker, but Rowan's too proud to admit his condition, so he pretends that he gave us Turtwig as a gift. It works out in our favour, so we play along. I call him Gut Rit. Dawn also lets us in that she's been stealing from Rowan for years, so we're both complicit. She hands us some Pokeballs, probably as a bribe, and the Nuzlocke begins. And back on Route 201, I get FBI Odo, the Bidoof, and back in Lake Verity, I catch Slytar, the Starly. Moving on to Route 2, I catch the guaranteed Chinx and call it Zinch. It even has Intimidate. Zinch is really all I need for these initial trainers. Straight past Jubilife on Route 204, I catch Weedub the Badu, who's also guaranteed. We now have to fight levels. The level starts off at Starly, and I sent out Zinch. Starly uses a tackle, not doing much thanks to the Intimidate, and a single wild charge takes it out. Chimchar's up next, and it goes for Scratch. A discharge paralyzes it, and then two more take it out. On Route 203, we run into a guaranteed Abra and actually manage to catch it. I call it Rabba. Funnily enough, all of these encounters so far are guaranteed as long as you play during the day, which I'm most definitely doing. You could actually take this a step further and get a semi-guaranteed Geodude, Zubat, and Onyx by going to the Ravaged Path just past Route 204 where there's a 2% chance of running into a Psyduck. But I forget, so we welcome Dude Ego, the Geodude from Orbora Gate. In the Orbora Mine, I also pick up Batsu, the Zubat, and then on Route 207, Hamcob the Machop. For Rook, I bring Gutrit, Zinch, and Hamcop. Rook's Geodude goes down to a Giga Drain from Guts. Onyx sets up Stealth Rocks and survives the Giga Drain. Rook gives it a futile potion, and a second Giga Drain takes it out. Finally, it's Cranidos, who I'm actually kind of worried about. The first Headbutt flinches Guts and puts it into crit range. I don't want my other Pokemon taking damage, so I stay in and Rook throws by using Leer. A single Giga Drain finishes off Craniodos. Easy enough, but it's only the first badge. On the way to Floroma, I skip my encounter in the Ravaged Path as looking for a 2% will take too long for my attention span. Past Floroma on Route 205, I catch El Slosh, the Shellos, and we're ready to take on Mars. Zubat misses a Supersonic and goes down to a single discharge. I don't think the crit mattered. I switch out to Hamcop on Thief and then back into Zinch to lower Paragli's attack. Next into Guts, then back into Zinch. Now I switch to Dude Ego on the Scratch. Paragli goes for a Thief and I misclicked using Double Edge doing just over half. Perugly heals some HP with an Oran Berry. Perugly goes for a Growl, but Earthquake from Ego crits bringing Perugly down. I don't think there was much of a chance of me losing this battle. I accidentally catch Uzi Bell the Weasel thinking this was a different route, but I never use it, so let's just ignore it. In a turn of forest, I forget to use a Repel and run into my next encounter. I quickly try and kill Cheryl's Chansey, but outspeeds and kills both of my encounters using Disarming Voice. She can stay in the forest. For Gardenia, I bring Slytar, Batsu, and Dudigo. Gardenia sends out Cheruby, and I send out Batsu. Venoshock does just over half to Cheruby, and Dazzling Gleam doesn't do anything. A second Venoshock takes it out. Venoshock does over half to Turtwig, and Razor Leaf doesn't do anything. For some reason, I risk the 5% mischance, but Air Slash hits to bring Turtwig down. Lastly, Roserade comes out. 
Roserade's specially bulky, and Basu has a pretty weak special attack stat, so switching it to Dudigo, expecting a poison move. Apparently, Gardenia read me and uses a Petal Blizzard, but Dudigo Sturdy saves him. I send out Batsu on the Grass Knot, and Petal Blizzard puts it into crit range. Air Slash does about a third. I switch into Slytar as Roserade uses Stun Spore. Roserade uses Petal Blizzard, but Slytar pushes past the Paralysis, using Brave Bird to knock Roserade out. If Petal Blizzard crit, the recoil damage would have finished off Sly as well. And there's the second badge. East of Eterna on Route to 11, we have a 35% chance to get a Meditite and a 10% chance to get a Ponita. Both encounters being pretty useful as they'll guarantee better encounters later on. Of course I run into Chingling. I call it Nykling. On Mount Coronet, I get Diet Item, the Meditite. Now it's time to fight Jupiter, who's considered to be a run-ender. Zubat starts off with a mean look, but Zinch takes it down with one wild charge. And next up is the scary Skun Tank. Unfortunately with this updated moveset, Intimidate Tactics won't work this time. I switch into Nykling on the Poison Gas. It survives the Snarl and then does the one useful thing it can do. Yawn. Nykling goes down to the next flamethrower and Stun Tank falls asleep. I send out Ego and two Earthquakes later, Stun Tank faints. To be fair, Kling probably gave us the safest way to win this battle. After running into every single biker on the cycling road, I catch Asnop, the Ponyta on Route 206. On Route 207, I also pick up a rare candy which you can use later to evolve a Pokemon. On Route 208, we catch Guaranteed Psyduck and call it Dusky PC. I'm glad I didn't spend too much time in the Ravished Path. On the way out of Hard Home, we get ambushed by levels. I forgot about this battle, so I had Guts as my lead. I switch into Zinch on Starly's Pluck. Starly hits a quick attack and a single discharge takes it out. The level sends out Buizel for some reason and uses Bite. Zinch is unflinched and Buizel goes down to discharge. Roselia sets up a Leech Seed on Slytar as it goes for agility. Roselia then faints to a Brave Bird the next turn, but Poison Point poisons Sly. I switch to Dudiga on Monferno's Mark Punch and Earthquake ends the battle. I skip the encounter on Route 209 as I ban the Chansey line on my runs, and the only other Pokemon we can get is Mime Jr. Mr. Mime is available on other routes. Also, I wasn't really paying attention around here and I lost Slytar to a rock throw from Bonsly. Oops. I also very stupidly go into the Lost Tower to get the HM for Surf and run into the spirit of Slytar, Sly Tag, who is now Ghastly. And the reason why this was stupid is because I could have got a guaranteed Ghastly in the old chateau, and since I already have Zubat, I could have gotten a guaranteed Murkrow. Basically a wasted encounter. Murkrow isn't really needed, but we get a Dusk Stone later on and a free Hunchcrow would have been useful. While here, I also learned that Team Galactic is pretty metal, because Teal is super effective against Fairy, you know, like the type of the Cleffa that they apparently killed. I also skip my encounter on Route 10 for the same reason as Route 209. On Route 215, I get the encounter that I've been dodging for so long, Kick Tenya, the Cricketot. We also run into a secret boss battle, Ace Trainer Dennis. Monferno goes down to an Earthquake, and I use Intimidate Cheese on the Gyarados and take it down with a Wild Charge. We reach Veilstone and we can take on the third gym. But first I use the rare candy I picked up to evolve Hamcop into a Machoke, and then I trade with my friends to evolve it into a Machamp. For Maylene, I bring Batsu, Zinch, and Hamcop. Maylene starts off with Meditite and I send out Batsu. Meditite uses Bulk Up and Batsu hits Air Slash, just missing the kill. I forget that Maylene heals and I go for a Venoshock. Meditite uses Drain Punch, not doing too much, and then Air Slash takes it down. I switch to Zinch to lower Machoke's attack and it gets hit with Rock Tomb. I switch to Batsu on the Bulldoze and then back to Zinch. Unfortunately, Rock Tomb crits and Zinch goes down. I've lost both of my Intimidators. Macho goes down to a Cross Chop, then two low sweeps after a heal. Lucario hits a Drain Punch but faints to a single low sweep from Ham Cop. Got the third badge, but at what cost? South of Elstone, I catch Skyte on the Stunky on Route 214, then at the Vala Lakefront, I catch Ari Frigga, the Giraffe Rig. We could move on right to Wake, but considering we just lost our only electric type, I think we need a replacement. So I head to Route 212 where I catch Woo Rep the Wooper, and then make my way to the Trophy Garden where I catch High Cup, the Pikachu. And this was pretty lucky as there was an equal chance to run into a Pichu, and I don't really want to waste a rare candy. Before Crash Awake, I use a rare candy that I picked up on Route 212 to evolve Gut Rit into Grotto. Before Crash Awake, I bring Ari Frigga, High Cup, and Gut Rit. Gyarados outspeeds and hits High Cup with a crunch, putting him into red, but gets paralyzed by Static. Discharge does over half. Cup now outspeeds, so I stay in, but Wake actually switches out his Pokemon. Quagsire nullifies the Thunderbolt. I switch to Guts as Quagsire misses a mud shot, and two bullet seeds take it down. Gyarados comes back out, but I decide to stay in. Gyarados is paralyzed, and Guts takes it down with a bullet seed. 
Floatzel has a nice fang, but despite the attack drop, Despite the heal from a citrus berry, Guts hits 4 bullet seeds in a row, bringing Floatzel down and earning us the 4th badge. Levels makes us fight him again. All our Ifrigger needs to do is use 2 Thunderbolts, then 2 Psychics. I pick up a rare candy from one of Rowan's caretakers, probably another bribe, and head to the Slacy on Ruins where I get Unwon, the unknown F. Is this a bad omen? Here we can get another rare candy. I use this to evolve Sky Sun into Stun Tank and Gut Rit into Torterra. For Fantina, I bring Sky Tun, Gut Rit, and Ari Frigga. Fantina sends out Driftblim and I send out Ari. Ari starts off with a crunch, doing just about half, and Driftblim goes for a fly. Protect makes this a non-issue. A Thunderbolt finishes Driftblim off. I stay in on Gengar and Ari gets hit with the Confuse Ray and then hits itself. I figure I can stay in and Gengar goes for a Sludge Bomb, leaving Ari on just 1 HP. It wasn't even an affection bonus. And this poisons him. Doesn't matter anyway as Ari hits itself in confusion once again. I send out Guts. Sludge Bomb does just over half and Crunch gets weakened by Kolba Berry doing just under half. I send out Sky Tun on the Confused Ray and Gengar uses Dazzling Gleam to do a bit. But Sky Tun pushes past the confusion and brings Gengar down with the Night Slash. But it gets disabled by Cursed Body. I try to stall the turn using Protect then Sky Tun hits itself after being confused by Miss Magius. Dazzling Gleam brings it into range of another Dazzling Gleam, and Stun Tank hits a Flamethrower. Night Slash is no longer disabled, but Miss Magius outspeeds, so goodbye Sky Tun. Guts takes the Dazzling Gleam that luckily misses a crit, and Crunch gets us the 5th badge. And this was probably the closest I've come to a wipe. I didn't include it in the video, but Ari was pretty much all I needed for random trainer battles, so I'll admit that his death hurt. Thanks to skipping the Mime Jr. encounter, we can get Jim Rem the Mr. Mime on Route 2 18. Levels is pretty easy this time around again, thanks to Jim. Star Ravia goes down to Thunderbolt. Monferno goes down to Psychic. Roselia goes down to two Psychics. Weasel goes down to Thunderbolt. And Heracross goes down to two Psychics. Onto the sixth gym. First I grab the rare candy from Route 218 and evolve El Slosh into a Gastrodon. For Byron, I bring Gut Rit, Ham Cop, and El Slosh. Byron leads with Bronzor and I send out Gut. Crunch does just over half and Bronzor sets up a trick room. Now Bronzor outspeeds to set up a Sandstorm against a ground Pokemon, and a second Crunch takes it down. Steelix is out and it outspeeds to use Earthquake for some reason to do little damage, and I go for Leaf Storm that does over half, but lowers Guts' special attack. Unfortunately, Torterra's level 100 moveset does not include Earthquake, so I'm forced to use Bulldoze, missing the kill. Byron uses a 4 Restore and Bulldoze does about a third. One more Bulldoze and another one is all I need. Oh. I thought Steelix was using Earthquakes against Guts as that was his best move, but I completely blanked on the fact that I've been reducing his speed this entire time. So despite Guts' low speed, I gave Steelix's Gyro Ball a free kill. Sorry Guts. Still reeling from my stupidity, I misclick and send out Ham Cop, but a cross chop takes Steelix out. A low sweep misses the kill on Bastiodon, but it had sturdy anyway. Bastiodon uses Iron Defense, but this isn't enough to stop the second low sweep from knocking it out. And that was definitely an avoidable death, but there's the 6th badge. The team got like itself a bomb in Lake Valor, and apparently that drains it. Here we fight Sasson, who always feels like the forgotten middle child of Team Galactic. And Jim was at the lead of my party, so as Kadabra goes for a rain dance, I use Zazen Gleam, which does less than half. I decide to go for a sucker punch, but Sasson switches out to Bronzor. Two switches in one game, this rarely ever happens for me. With the rain up, I switch to El Slosh on the Confuse Ray. El Slosh pushes past that and hits a boosted surf, doing over half. Assassin reads me and switches again on the dry skin Toxicroak. Twice in one battle, this never happens. And that was actually a smart switch as well. I criticized this game a lot, but the AI definitely had a glow up. But El Slosh has earth power that just misses the kill. Toxicroak's revenge does over half. And Assassin switches out again. I'm being spoiled today. Into Bronzor as well, but this time Surf knocks it out. I should have anticipated the rain dance, but I go for an earth power. Luckily it still gets the kill. And finally Toxic Croak goes down to another Earth Power. You won't be the forgotten middle child for me anymore, Sasson. On to Lake Verity to fight Mars. Jim's Psychic does over half to Golbat, and Golbat misses a crit with Poison Fang. A second Psychic takes it out. I switch out to El Slosh and Bronzor's Gyro Ball and hit a Surf doing under half, being confused in the process. Two more Surfs bring Bronzor down. Perugly goes down to a critical cross chop from Ham Cop. On the way to Snowpoint, I grab a rare candy from Mount Coronet and catch Last Sense the Sneasel on Route 217. I also caught Senor V the Snova on Route 216 but lost the footage. These two encounters are guaranteed anyway. For Candace, I bring Kick Tenure. 
El Slosh, Jim Rem, and Ham Cop. Leading with a kick, I set up a sticky web and get hit with a critical avalanche. I switched to Ham Cop on the second avalanche. Did you know that Macham can learn flamethrower? I didn't. Special attacking Macham gave me another run idea. I switched to Jim Rem while Medicham bulks up. Dazzling Gleam misses the kill. Medicham's stereotype up use is a sad sight as it wastes another turn bulking up. Candace heals using a full restore, but Dazzling Gleam gets a higher roll and heal damage knocks Medicham out. I switch out to Ham Cop as Obama Snow uses Aurora Veil on the last turn of Hail. I stay in to use another flamethrower and it does less than half. And then Obama hits a blizzard out of Hail, taking Ham Cop down. I was honestly expecting Flamethrower to do more even with the Veil up, and I thought Obama Snow would have gone for something else. The Pokemon I brought really weren't the best choices to deal with this. I send out Kick and use a Perish Song as Obama misses a Blizzard, and then three switches and two misses from Blizzard later, Obama Snow goes down. Some may call this a cheap strategy. Yes. I thought Ham Cop could have soloed, but it isn't too useful in the upcoming battles, so... Eh. Also, I completely forgot about Asinop. Apparently, Stun Tank was a run ender for levels, and now we have to clean up his mess. Storming the subtly hidden galactic headquarters, we run into Cyrus. My pet peeve is when people say this phrase wrong. If you could care less, that means you still care, Cyrus. I can't let this go unpunished, so I start an unprovoked battle. Mercury goes down to a single dazzling gleam. The first Psychic does over half to Golbat, and Poison Fang does over half to Jim Rem. Jim outspeeds so another Psychic finishes Golbat off. Jim could probably handle Sneasel, but I send out El Slosh just in case. All it uses is Metal Claw as El Slosh slowly kills it with Earth Power. Maybe he'll learn a thing or two about idioms now. Was that even an idiom? I'll admit that that's a pretty cool line for a Pokemon villain. Unfortunate that we're seven badges in and the only evolved Pokemon he had was Golbat. We find that Cyrus keeps Saturn in the basement and he's upset that we've gotten more attention than he has. Kadabra uses Psychic and Dudigo survives on 1 HP thanks to Sturdy. And a single Earthquake knocks Kadabra out. I switch into El Slosh on the Brick Break. Toxic Croak uses Toxic and Earth Power just misses the kill. But the next one takes it down. I switch into Sly Tag as Brontor uses Payback. I don't see a kill so I stay in and use Shadow Ball to do over half. Payback wasn't in range for a crit. The next Shadow Ball finishes Bronzor. Assassin phase out of existence. Traversing through Mount Coronet, I grab two more rare candies, one on the outside on the way to Spear Pillar, and one in this room that I've never really understood the purpose of. It just leads back to one of the entrances. In fact, it probably takes more effort to take this path than just to go back the way you came, or better yet, fly. Fighting through a few more grunts, we make it to Spear Pillar. Honestly, I kind of like the chibi models, but something about the scene is so unintentionally hilarious to me. Mars and Jupiter battle us, and Levels decides to make this fight much harder. For us. I switch into El Slosh as Bronzor uses Reflect, and the other one uses Extra Sensory. Munchlax uses Bite. El Slosh uses Surf, and then gets confused by Confusory. The other Bronzor sets up a light screen. Munchlax uses Bite. El Slosh pushes past the confusion and uses a Surf to take Bronzor out. Another Bite from Munchlax. Perugly uses Body Slam on El Slosh, and he uses Surf, taking out the other Bronzor. Body Slam from Perugly finishes Munchlax off, and Golbat had Giga Drain? Luckily it misses the crit, and El Slosh survives. He also pushes past the confusion to use Ice Beam on Golbat. I switch out to Jim Rem and Perugly feigns to a close combat from Infernape. Giga Drain does little to Jim. Infernape uses Flame Wheel on Golbat and Jim Rem finishes off Golbat. Poison Fang from Golbat misses the crit but poisons Jim. I switch to Ego as Infernape uses close combat on Stun Tank, procking its Citrus Berry. Poison Fang poisons Ego and Stun Tank poisons Infernape with Poison Gas. Infernape puts Stun Tank into red with close combat and a combination of U-turn and Snarl almost kill Ego. Ego uses Earthquake, taking out both Stun Tank and Infernape. I switch out to Senor, then Sly Tag as Weasel gets a critical brine, knocking out Golbat. Time to find my favorite planet, Cyrus. Cyrus leads with Haunchcrow, and I send out Dude Ego. Haunchcrow starts off with a defog, but Ego's Stone Edge hits, bringing it down. I switch out to Senor V on Gyarados' Waterfall. Crunch does a lot of damage, but Senor V hits a blizzard, not only critting, but also freezing Gyarados. Cyrus switches to Weavile as I switch to Jim. This AI, man. I need Jim to preserve HP, so I switch into El Slosh on Metal Claw. This time, Weavile isn't locked into Metal Claw as it goes for a dig. El Slosh misses. I switch out to Sly Tag on Dig and then into Dude Ego on Fling. I know what's coming, so Weavile uses Dig and Dude Ego hits a boosted Earthquake, knocking Weavile out. Gyarados comes back out, so I switch into Jim. Unfortunately, it thaws out and uses Waterfall, but misses the crit. I can't have my team take more damage, so I stay in to hit a Thunderbolt, which is weakened by Wakan Berry and Gyarados uses Waterfall to finish Jim Rem. I switch out to El Slosh, but Cyrus uses a full restore. Ice Beam does not take it out. 
Gyarados, however, boosts Elslosh's special attack with Waterfall, and a few Ice Beams later, goes down. Crobat uses U-Turn, putting Elslosh into crit range, and Ice Beam does over half. I decide to risk the crit, and it works out. A second Ice Beam puts an end to Crobat. And that was actually pretty tough. Gyarados especially could have done a lot worse had Ice Fang frozen or flinched Elslosh. Jim Rem filled a similar role to Ari Frigga before her, so that kind of hurt. And now we had face Dialga. Dialga? I always thought it was Dialga, you know, like Sundial, but everyone says I'm wrong. Anyway, this thing's terrifying. It has a really good moveset and a roar of time which could one-shot any of my Pokemon. And the only one that can resist it is dead. Nah, no, just kidding, I throw a Master Ball. Hey, I don't use legendaries, but there's no rules against me catching them. And I haven't gotten my Spear Pillar encounter yet. Anyway, that puts an end to that storyline and we can move on to the last gym. I head back to Mount Coronet and pick up another rare candy that I missed. I use these rare candies to evolve Dudigo into Graveler, Slytag into Haunter, and Senor V into Obama Snow. And then I trade my friends to get Gollum and Gengar. For Volkner, I bring Dudigo, El Slosh, Senor V, and Slytag. Volkner sends out Raichu and I send out Dudigo. I completely forgot the Raichu line got Surf as a TM now. But Ego survives thanks to Sturdy, and despite the Shuckerberry, Earthquake takes Raichu out. I switch out to Senor V on Octillery's Octazooka. It lowers his accuracy, but he still hits the Wood Hammer, bringing Octillery down. And now I remember Amapom destroying my team during my first playthrough since I didn't bring any Pokemon that resisted normal. But this time I have Slytag. All Amapom can use is Thunderbolt, so after a few futile heals and some Sludge Bombs later, Luxray's out. I switch out to El Slosh, and Luxray's Crunch does a lot. Luxray uses Crunch again, putting me into a range of another, but a single Earth Power gets us the final badge. I was kind of hoping Dudigo would do most of the work, but turns out I needed the whole team after that initial blunder. Before heading to the Pokemon League, I go back to Wayward Cave and grab an encounter that I forgot about. Brozorn, the Bronzor. I could have tried for the Gibble, but Garchomp's are banned from my run, so it would need to stay as a good bite. And then on the way to Victory Road, I catch Clean Suit, the Tentacruel. And in Victory Road, I get my final encounter, Xeno, the Steelix. Before moving on, I use a rare candy on Brozorn to evolve it into a Bronzong. Time to fight levels one last time, and this time he's actually pretty tough. The levels leads with Staraptor, and I send out El Slosh. Staraptor starts with a close combat and does just under half, and with the defense drop, Staraptor goes down to Ice Beam. Is what I would have said, but it's holding a Focus Sash. I switch out to Sly Tag, but Staraptor uses U Turn, which gets disabled, into Float Cell. Float Cell uses Crunch, which almost kills Sly Tag, but he survives and takes Float Cell out with one Thunderbolt. Snorlax is actually really scary as it's probably his bulkiest Pokemon and has something to hit all of mine. I switch into Dudigo on Crunch. Earthquake does just under half and Snorlax uses Yawn. I switch out to Brozorn on Hammer Arm and stay in to do some chip with Psychic. Snorlax once again uses Yawn. Back into Dudigo on Crunch and Earthquake brings Snorlax down. Roserade's next, so I switch back into Brozorn on Grass Knot. Roserade sets up Grassy Terrain and Psychic does over half. I learned that Brozorn doesn't have Levitate and Grass Knot doesn't get the kill. Psychic finishes off Roserade. Infernape's up so it's Clean Toot's time to shine. Close Combat does under half but puts Toot into crit range. However, Grassy Terrain brings it right back out. The second Close Combat doesn't crit and after two defense drops, Infernape goes down to Surf. And next up is Heracross and unfortunately Clean Toot's done all it needs to. But Heracross misses the Rock Slide and Toot hits the Poison Jab. It doesn't do that much. This time Heracross uses Swords Dance, making it into a real threat, and Surf brings it below half. Rock Slide misses again and Toot hits another Surf. Maybe this is a sign. Sadly, the next Rock Slide connects and Clean Toot goes down. One thing that I do know about Heracross is that it has no fighting moves, so I send out Dudigo. Thief wasn't able to get a crit and Heracross feigns to double edge. Staraptor's back out and I switch into Senor V for some reason. And luckily, Close Combat doesn't kill and Staraptor gets brought down by Hail Damage. Levels this T went from 1 to 100. All that's left is the Elite Four. Now Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have a lot of flaws, but one thing I love about these games are the Elite Four. It's probably one of, if not the best one in the series so far. The Pokemon choices themselves are pretty mediocre, but what's special about them is that they not only have competent movesets, not only are they holding fireball items, but they also have competitive natures and EV spreads. There are definitely some weird choices here and there, but for the most part, their teams are solid. I typically don't EV train in vanilla games, but this one may need some preparations. First off, I use a rare candy and a razor claw to evolve last sense into a Weavile. And then I head back to Route 201 to do some EV training. But that took too long. But we have a solution. And there's a benefit of this challenge that I haven't really spoken about yet. 
When we defeat a trainer, we get prize money. And this prize money is determined by the trainer class and the trainer's highest leveled Pokemon. Which means all this time we've been getting the max amount of money we can from beating trainers. And now I've been avoiding most trainers where I can, but after buying some TMs, I still have enough money to buy roughly 60 vitamins. So I pump some protein and carbos into the veins of my newly evolved Lassens, and distribute some carbos and calcium among the rest of my team. I also break all the bonds I've made with my Pokemon, and after teaching them some new moves, we're ready for the league. I can't access the boxes while I'm battling the Elite Four, so for each battle I'll be benching one Pokemon to match their team size. It will still be in my party, I just won't be allowed to use it. And the Pokemon I bring for my final team are La Sense, the Weavile, Senor V, the Obama Snow, Dudigo, the Golem, El Slosh, the Gastrodon, Sly Tag, the Gengar, and Brozorn, the Bronzong. For Aaron, I bench Senor V. Aaron starts off with Dust Tox, and I send out La Sense. The only thing I'm worried about is a critical bug buzz, so I set up a Swords Dance, and luckily, as expected, Dust Tox uses Toxic. But a Petra Berry takes care of that, and Dust Tox goes down to Aerial Ace. Heracross goes down to Aerial Ace, and Beautifly goes down to Aerial Ace, but I'm not too confident that I can one-shot Vespiquen, so I switch out to Sly Tag on attack order. Thunderbolt does over half, procking Vespiquen, Citrus Berry, and she goes for a defense order. I don't think Vespiquen can do much to Sly, so I use another Thunderbolt, not doing too much. But then she hits back with a boosted Acrobatics, thankfully missing the crit, and also Cursed Body activates, disabling her Acrobatics. I switch out to Dude Ego on Aerial Ace, Attack order doesn't do too much, and Stone Edge hits, bringing Vespiquen down. The crit was a bit overkill. Finally, it's Drapion, and it uses Earthquake, revealing that Ego was in crit range. But Ego hits his own Earthquake, getting us our first victory. For Bertha, I bench Brozorn. Quirksire can't really do anything to Senor V, so I set up a substitute as a Toxic fails. After that, Senor recovers all of his HP back with the Giga Drain. Pseudo Wudo survives the first Giga Drain, and Head Smash breaks the substitute. Another Giga Drain takes it out. Whiskash is next so I stick to what works but it was holding a Rindo Berry managing to survive and it goes for Bulldoze. I figure it can't do too much so I stay in and Whiskash outspeeds and uses Belch but it misses. I was not expecting it to have that. The next Giga Drain ends it. After a Bulldoze I don't think I can outspeed Golem so I switch into my own and Stone Edge misses. I then switch back into Senor V on Golem's Earthquake and set up Hail to break it sturdy. Now into El Slosh on the Stone Edge. Golem outspeeds and hits an Earthquake, leaving Gastrodon on just 1 HP. This wasn't even an affection boost. Citrus Berry restores some HP and Surf takes Golem out. I switch to Senor V on Hippowdon's Earthquake and a few Giga Drains later, we've beaten Bertha. I honestly wasn't mentally prepared to lose El Slosh this early on. For Flint, I bench Senor V. Rapidash hits an Iron Tail, not doing too much, and goes down to a single Surf. Lopunny's out, so I switch to Gengar, expecting a normal move, and Lopunny goes for a high jump kick, getting hurt in the process. Sludge Bomb doesn't get the kill when Flint uses a full restore. I switch out to El Slosh to see if I can fool Flint again, and Lopunny uses Mirror Coat. I dodged a bullet. Flint does indeed fall for this again, but also heals Lopunny again. It looks like he's picking favorites. Anything you want to share, Flint? At least Sludge Bomb poisons this time. Flint falls for all reliable a third time, and this time it actually finishes Lopunny off. Steelix is next, so I switch into Last Sense on the Crunch, and then El Slosh on the Iron Tail. Steelix feigns to a single surf. Next up is Drift Blim, and I decide to stay in. It burns El Slosh with Will O Wisp, and Ice Beam does over half. Citrus Berry takes it out of range of a second Ice Beam. Worried that Drift Blim might use something like Hex, I switch out to Last Sense as Drift Blim sets up a Minimize. And this could be scary. Drift Blim outspeeds and uses Baton Pass to switch into the Ace Infernape, passing the Evasion Boost. And now this is terrifying. Night Slash scratches it. Had I set up Swords Dance, I could have used Aerial Ace, but now I'm not too confident about it one-shotting, so I switched to Sly Tag on the Mark Punch. It looks like it was for the best. Infernip outspeeds and Fire Fang leaves Sly Tag on just 5 HP. It also gets disabled. And Sly Tag actually manages to hit the sidekick, getting the kill. Drift Blim's back out and having lost its unburden boost, I stay in and Shadow Ball brings Drift Blim down. I later learned that Drift Blim in fact has no attacking moves, so much risk could have been avoided had I known that. However, I probably would have lost last sense to Muck Punch. For Lucian, I bench Dude Ego. Mr. Mime starts off as a reflect, and Gyro Ball gets a first turn crit. Mr. Mime goes for a dazzling gleam, and I use Payback to preserve Gyro Ball PP. Lucian heals. We'll be here for a while. Eventually, reflect wears off, and I can go for a Gyro Ball to end Mr. Mime. Next up is Metacham, and I switch to Sly Tag on the high jump kick, and Shadow Ball takes it out. 
I switched out to Last Sense on the Alakazam Psychic, and the only thing I'm worried about is two critical shock waves in a row. Oh. And now I'm afraid of just one. Last Sense sets up a Swords Dance. And luckily it doesn't crit, and a plus two Night Slash one shots Alakazam. And finally, we're on Bronzong. I switched to El Slosh while Bronzong sets up a Trick Room. Earthquake does more to El Slosh than Surf does to Bronzong. I'm out of crit range, so I stay in for another Surf. El Slosh is now in crit range, so I switch to Senor V on the Earthquake. I use Protective Scout Bronzong's move, and it uses Payback, suggesting that Gyro Ball won't do too much. I use the Giga Drain, hoping to keep Bronzong out of heal range, but that doesn't work. After a barrage of not very effective attacks from both sides, Bronzong finally goes down, and we've beaten the Elite Four. And this wasn't the hardest battle by any means, but it was probably the longest one out of the Elite Four. And now with all of our Pokemon still alive, we're ready for Cynthia. Cynthia leads with Spirit Tomb and I send out La Sense and we trade pressures. I set up a Swords Dance to test the waters. Spirit Tomb uses Shadow Ball, which unfortunately does about a quarter, which means that my substitute strategy isn't gonna work. La Sense sets up another Swords Dance and Spirit Tomb goes for another Shadow Ball, proccing the Citrus Berry. Luckily still no defense drops. One final Swords Dance on Spirit Tomb's Dark Pulse. Now La Sense uses Thief to one-shot Spirit Tomb and steals its Citrus Berry, recovering some HP. Lucario is next and a single low sweep takes it down. Roserade goes down to a single Thief, but Poison Point triggers, poisoning La Sense. Gastrodon's out and this is why I need as much health as possible. I don't think it'll go down to a single hit and either Rock Tomb or Earthquake's coming out. So I stay in to hit a low sweep and Earthquake grants La Sense a well-deserved nap. With the lowered speed, Senor V outspeeds and safely takes out Gastrodon with the Giga Drain. Next up is Milotic. Milotic is pretty bulky, and it also has Mirror Coat, which makes it pretty threatening. But Senor has Wood Hammer, which does over half. Cynthia wastes the turn. Milotic gets burned by a Flame Orb, activating her Marvel Scale, raising her defense. The Wood Hammer doesn't get the kill, but the damage from Hail and Burn brings Milotic down. But it's not over yet. Finally, it's the Ace Guard Chomp. I need to save Switch, and it's the final battle, so good night, Senor V. I send out Sly Tag, hoping I can get some chip damage with Dazzling Gleam, but Garchomp outspeeds and puts a quick stop to Sly Tag with Earthquake. However, from the grave, Sly gives us a ray of hope and disables Garchomp's Earthquake. I send out Dude Ego, and Garchomp sets up a Swords Dance, but Dude Ego's Earthquake looks to do about a half. I'm unsure if this is a roll, but Cynthia throws and uses another Swords Dance, guaranteeing the win, and the second Earthquake puts an end to Garchomp, and the Nuzlocke. I actually think doing the challenge this way made me appreciate the game more. In a normal run, the levels of important trainers are surprisingly low, with Pokemon on the same team often having a 3-4 level gap. If playing with hardcore Nuzlocke rules, you can level up right to the ace Pokemon, meaning you'll still likely be a good few levels higher than the rest of their team. Making all Pokemon level 100 evened out the playing field and made me appreciate how many trainers and their Pokemon got a revamped moveset and better items that made this run pretty challenging. Thanks for watching. I'll be honest though, despite finding a newfound appreciation for these games, what it mostly did was remind me how much I miss Platinum, and I've already got a few weird ideas on challenge runs, so please look out for that in the future.